been quite a long time since I filmed one of these. Hi everyone, here's the Book Chemist once again, and if there is one thing I like very, very much, is pitching the books I love, but also really the music I love, and the games I love, and all the artworks that I that I adore, against one another, uh, in and, and ranking them in this list that make very little sense, because how can you really compare and rank books that follow very different goals and tell significantly different stories through different narrative tools and means, how can you really rank them, and yet at the same time doing this gives me that liberating feeling of having my toy Tyrannosaurus fight my Batmobile. Um, and so I'm going to do it today too with Jonathan Lethem, one of my very favorite writers, a writer with whom I've had a somewhat roller coaster relationship, meaning that when I first read him I thought I didn't even like him. And progressively but slowly, he's come to be one of, again, one of my very favorite, probably top five writers to continue with the uh, ranking um, uh, thing. Among my very favorite writers is the only one whose books, or at least whose novels, I all like. All of the books I'm going to talk about today are books that I either reread frequently with great pleasure or would gladly reread one day. And I just love the playfulness of his language, the way he mixes genres so unexpectedly and inventively in his novels, and the ways in which he can shine a light on some of the most uncomfortable and obscure corners of our own psyche, and on, on, and on some of the most oppressive engines that keep our society spinning, without ever resorting to propaganda and without ever coming across as a moralist. In fact, all of his books, even the grimmest ones and less hopeful, always shine with a certain uplifting note, which is the very simple but immensely beautiful note of connection that you find in fiction that is truly stimulating and interesting, and most of all, truly fun to read. Jonathan Lithem's books are all really entertaining, and that note, uh, this element, this magical, enchanted element that I'm talking about, is the sheer beauty of that connection that happens when you just engage with a writer who's telling you a very cool story. Now, the, the video is probably titled Top 5 Jonathan Lethem Book to, to lure the same people uh, to watch it, but obviously, if you know me, you'll know that I'll be ranking all of Jonathan Lethem's novels. Will there be time for a bonus section about his non-fiction, about his short stories? I guess you'll have to watch and see. The Blot slash A Gambler's Anatomy is a book. It exists. I remember a scene uh, with a, a, back, a game of backgammon played with beef patties on top of a, um, a burger grill, and that was a pretty cool scene. You Don't Love Me Yet is uh, a good book. I wouldn't say it's a very good book, and yet it's still my very favorite rock and roll novel, the, the best I've read so far at least. Funnily enough, Lethem has an essay where he talks about this idea that many rock and roll novels, and novels about music bands in general, deal with this fictional music acts, and somehow they always sound like the kind of band you would never in a million years want to listen to. Somehow Lethem manages to pull off a rather difficult synesthetic trick and you kind of get a sense, I definitely got a sense of the kind of music the band in You Don't Love Me Yet plays. It's a very beautiful book about a few young people who maybe don't necessarily have much in common with one another, but who still come together and uh, have their lives joined and, and also clash with one another thanks to music and thanks to their common passion for this musical creation that they've brought together. The Federal Detective is a very topical novel. I don't know if this is a thing, but if other novels of this sort exist, we would need to call this genre 2016 fiction. It's a novel that deals with that most terrible year where all of a sudden it looked like everybody, um, so many great artists were dying left and right, Bowie, uh, Lemmy and, and so many others, um, and then Brexit happened, and then Trump happened, and the feeling of despair that many of us felt at seeing these terrible regressive forces coming to power all over the West 
was really difficult to cope with and, and many of us felt this desire to just give up and retreat away from social life into our some kind of self-righteous surrender. The Feral Detective through uh, a journey into the desert following these bizarre death cults and um, strange hippie groups battling one another in a strange pre-post-apocalypse deals with that very well and more broadly speaking deals with these feelings of resignation and tries to find through its characters a constructive way forward that doesn't fall into that trap of just giving up uh, and, and surrendering to evil people. Beyond Trump and 2016, it's still a very entertaining novel uh, about an investigation uh, led by a couple of rather unforgettable characters, especially the title character. Amnesia Moon is Lethem's take on the freakier end of the science fiction spectrum. It's written in the same vein, at least it reminded me of the works of Brian Aldiss, the sci-fi works of Italo Calvino, the craziest side of Ballard. It's four or five post-apocalyptic novels wrapped into a single really tasty literary burrito. Little aside, Lethem has an essay on books as sandwiches, which is genius and, and wonderful. And if you can find, uh, if you can get your hands on that sandwich, on that sandwich, on that essay, by all means, read it. It's collected in More Alive and Less Lonely. Um, what was I talking about? Amnesia Moon uh, wraps together all of these different um, post-apocalyptic visions. It's a very imaginative, very defamiliarizing novel. It made me look at certain aspects of contemporary society and modern life through a different lens. I will admit I don't remember too much about the plot or the characters, but those elements I was talking about, those new perspectives that it contributed, and the crazier elements of its science fictional invention have stuck with me and are still very vivid in my mind. Girl in Landscape is a space western that abandons much of the irony and dark humor that had denoted Lethem's previous novels at that stage, and deals with several really difficult themes, most notably grief, in a really lucid manner. It conveys very well that feeling of awe oh, mixed with horror caused by the harsh landscapes of this frontier, which is the same feeling you find in a lot of Western cinema. You find it a lot in the, the fiction of Cormac McCarthy um, and the alien planet on which most of the book is set is one of Lethem's most brilliant uh, fictional inventions, alongside, of course, the inhabitants of the planet. The Archbuilders, that's how they're called, the Archbuilders. The Arrest is Lethem's latest novel, came out last year, and it's his anti-post-apocalyptic manifesto, a little bit like um, uh, The Feral Detective, uh, it's a take on that defeatist attitude that you find uh, represented in a lot of post-apocalyptic fiction, which comes very often, for all of its grimness and all of its horror, very often comes to be a sort of uh, wishful Filling fantasy. Uh, the, the key reflection in the arrest about this is this idea that the post-apocalypse always looks better than what came before in so much post-apocalyptic fiction. The arrest tries to fight that on the level of its broader themes and of its narrative structure, whatever that is. Uh, and in terms of its plot and characters, it's so well orchestrated, it feels very much like watching a beautifully crafted diorama. Uh, a real pleasure. Gun with Occasional Music is a really weird one, because in many ways it packs together and fuses brilliantly and seamlessly a lot of the genres and concerns that Lethem would explore in later novels. It's a hard-boiled detective novel with its genres concern with exploring the seedy underbelly of society and the way the world of crime is necessary really to the sustenance of the supposed clean society supposedly above it. But it's also a science fiction novel and a dystopian novel too about the way our consumeristic society is bound to lead us to work a very dark place very fast. And this would make very little sense that somehow Lethem's first debut novel 
is actually more complex and more achieve, achieves more in many ways than his later works. If not that Lithum obviously has an essay on it where he talks about this crazy idea of debut novels and first novels and the fact that when he published Motherless Brooklyn many people thought that was his first novel and that Amnesia Moon was maybe written before Gunn or anyway that all of these novels and the ideas behind them coexist in a way that makes talking about novels in any kind of chronological order somewhat meaningless I'll put a link to that essay in the description box there's all sorts of nice things in the description box check it out it's just a brilliant book features a rather unforgettable vision of a grim and very believable future uh, a, a lot of rather interesting talking animals I'm a fan of talking animals and uh, a plot that is so tightly packed there's really not a page wasted in here. I remember uh, Metcalf, the protagonist, keeps buying sandwiches that he doesn't eat, that he, throw, he, threw, he throws them away after a bite or two and that upset me very much. One thing Lethem and I have in common I think is that we both enjoy a good sandwich. I'm a fan of a sandwich. Before I get to the actual top five uh, essays and short stories, I don't love Jonathan Lithem's short stories as much as his novels. They tend to be harder to uh, to appreciate for me, mostly I think because Lithem's writing being rather complex, somewhat intricated most of the time, uh, is the kind of writing that requires a certain acclimatization time in order for you to get into it. What happens to me whenever I read one of his novels is that I'm a bit disoriented in the first couple of chapters but then I get into the rhythms of his prose and I just love the experience. With short stories very often and for obvious reasons it's harder to do that in the limited uh, space you have but a short story collect oh, that doesn't mean he is not a, a brilliant short story writer it's just my problem and a brilliant short story collection that I would still recommend everyone is The Wall of the Sky, The Wall of the Eye. It's Haunt, haunting is putting it lightly. The stories in here deal with abuse, with rape, with violence, with the horrors of incarceration and the prison system, very brutally and very honestly. And it's possibly its hardest hitting book, I would say, and it's vastly disturbing. But because of this reason, really, it allows Lethem to deal into the roots and consequences of all of these terrible acts. It is unforgettable just as much as it is haunting. In terms of his essays, Lethem is a brilliant essay writer. I recently commented on Twitter that reading Jonathan Lethem's essays and criticism is a really depressing experience because it makes you feel like every original thought you well every original every thought you always had about a work of fiction or a movie or a painting or whatnot is just a, 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 a toddler's wailing of <laughs> this is nice whereas he has this wonderful elaborate insightful views on everything it, it's incredible how much the guy has read and watched and knows is just you know a walking pop cultural encyclopedia a consequence of his omnivorous taste is that he's published essays on all sorts of things, all sorts of music genres and um, cinematic genres, all sorts of works of fiction, um, comic books, of course, he's published a lot on that too. That is to say that the essay collections are maybe more for Lethem fans than for people who are interested in, I don't know, art criticism, literary criticism per se except The Disappointment Artist would definitely be my favorite among his um, non-fiction books because it the, the essays in here deal with different things, The Searchers, the John Ford movie, they deal with um, Philip Dick uh, and many other, Star Wars, many other cultural phenomena, but they, they are also all tied together uh, as a bit of an exploration into the way Lethem, especially as a young man, viewed the world through these artworks and used them in some ways to deal with several aspects of his life and had his life shaped by this art at the same time as his mind took it, took this art inside itself, reworked it, considered it under different lights. It's a beautiful book for everyone who finds themselves spending a long time thinking about the the works of art, the uh, 
books, movies, whatnot that they love. And for that reason, I would recommend it to everyone, really. Uh, you don't need to be a hardcore Lithium fan to read this one. The top five, finally. Motherless Brooklyn would be the novel I recommend to anyone who's never read Jonathan Lithium and is looking for an entry point into his oeuvre. It features his most compelling and unforgettable protagonist, this young, uh, well, not, not that young, actually, at the time of the book, this Brooklyn orphan who suffers from Tourette's syndrome. It's a beautiful book about rather complicated and rather ambivalent male friendships in particular. Lionel's friendship with Minna, with his mentor, Lionel's, Lionel's friendship with his friends, who are always also his bully no matter how old they've grown. It's in so many ways a deeply sad book, but it's written with a wonderful type of humor. And Whenever you're laughing in this book, you're always laughing alongside Lionel. You're never, you're never laughing at his, um, at his syndrome and at his difficulties. I uh, recently reread this one with immense pleasure, and I might be filming a fuller review soon. I, I filmed one when I read it the first time, but it made no sense. I think I've removed it from the channel ages ago. Number four, As She Climbed Across the Table. By far my favorite uh, Lethem's science fiction novel, with an asterisk in there. And another one where Lethem pushes your imagination to its limit, just to try and comprehend the phenomenon, this bizarre hair in the whole of creation that is at the heart of the novel. The exploration of these characters faced with this unprecedented physical phenomenon is just brilliant and feels quirky and offbeat, but somehow also really relatable. It's just a gem of a novel, it's polished, it's rather perfect, I would say. Um, this might actually be an even better entry into Lethem's Uber if you've never read him, if you are big into science fiction. I, w I think this is a must read for every science fiction fan. The three books at the top of this list are all masterpieces, if you ask me. Number three, Dissident Gardens. I've always been a huge fan of the United States and American culture. Ever since I was a kid, I was uh, into uh, Americana in all different ways. Uh, I studied American literature in college and did my PhD on the subject, but there was always a big dissonance in me, related most notably to the fact that a lot of the American ideals of freedom, justice for all, equality, that I held so dear and that seemed so luminous to me, seemed also to be completely absent from, um, from so many areas of American life. And This in Gardens really is one of the books that helped me comprehend this dissonance and this gap most clearly. By being centered um, in a way around the American Communist Party, it embraces this idea that a lot of American values have been co-opted, especially after World War II, and that many values that, in, in fact, are seen these days as, as entirely anti-American are actually the founding values that the Republic should be based upon. In Italy, where I'm from, it was always the left who appreciated American culture, American writers, exported them into Italy and introduced them to the broader cultural discussion. Even though, paradoxically, a lot of people in the United States see socialism still as a taboo word and as a great evil that must be fought at all costs, Costs. And that's another element, once again, that this book allowed me to, to reconcile and to understand. It's an amazingly countercultural uh, work. It's a choral novel. It features so many different, very different characters and follows all of them with the same kind of honesty, ruthlessness when it explores their psyche and their inner life, but also great generosity and great love. And it should be so um, uh, much more widely read than it is. I don't think this one gets the, the love it deserves, unlike, say, Motherless Brooklyn or the two books I'm going to talk about in a minute. The Fortress of Solitude is the first Lethem novel I read, and I really struggled with it, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. It's an immensely depressing novel. It's truly bleak, it's a difficult read, mostly because it deals in so many different ways, and from page one to the last one, really, with bullying. 
And not just bullying on, on the school playground, really, but bullying and its consequences on so many aspects and areas of life, so many different types of bullying, but a kind of bullying that's not just what happens to, I don't know, an overweight kid um, who is unlucky enough to have douchebags as his classmates. It's a kind of bullying that that is also tied to a process that was happening in Brooklyn especially, but in many other places in the Western world throughout the last few decades, which is gentrification. And with this idea that the protagonist is at once oppressed by his peers, while also being privileged in basically all other areas of his life, and being destined by, by inheritance really to a better life than what these other people, these other kids, these African-American, Hispanic kids can truly hope for. You can see how difficult the social dynamics that this novel deals with are and the manner in which Lethem covers these topics and deals with them, again, without ever being moralistic, without ever uh, offering easy and unlikely solutions, but just by documenting a terrible time in the evolution of Western societies and a truly destructive phenomena, uh, both on society at large and on many of the individuals who have to live through it. It's beyond words. Dylan Abdus is maybe Lethem's quieter protagonist, at least among uh, the books I've talked about in, in this top five, but in many ways it's the mo he is the most complex among Lethem's fictional creations. And the complexity of his feelings, of the bullying he imposes on himself in the, in the first place, and this idea that all his life he prevented himself for, from expressing the passions and the loves he held most dear because of certain traumas that he incurred in as a young man. It's all truly wonderfully orchestrated in Fortress of Solitude and discovering this life throughout the many wondrous and supernatural even occurrences that marked it is always a brilliant, difficult but brilliant experience. Number one is Chronic City easily a candidate for the title of my favorite novel of all times. Bizarrely, for someone who's so uh, into lists and ranks, I don't really have one. Um, and possibly my favorite, you know, when I mentioned, uh, as she climbed across the table, I said it was my favorite science fiction novel with an asterisk. That's because Chronic City is also a science fiction novel. And yet at the same time, I would claim that its point, its central argument is that it really isn't. Um, Chronic City, its bizarre, odd, borderline supernatural elements feel of Kelter, feel like the intrusion of a world beyond our own. But possibly the central point of Chronic City, and it took me a few readings to get there, is that they really aren't, that it's really just our world that we are pushing to the brink of destruction and into a place where it almost feels strange to us, a place where um, whales come swimming up the Hudson River, where uh, eagles perch on top of um, lintels in New York, or balconies in New York apartment buildings. A world that feels as strange and, and bizarre as the one we see in, in the news every day with natural uh, phenomena going, going rampant, with pandemics spreading all over the place, but a world that only feels this strange because of our failure to come to grips with our guilt, with the roles we play in this cataclysmic phenomenon. I'm making it sound as if it's a condemnation of global warming, which is it is in many ways, but it's mostly a story about a few escapists coming together in a... Um, an apartment building in, in Manhattan filled with books and uh, tapes and movies and just retreating away from the horror of this changing world into this dimension of immense privilege. And Chronic City somehow and paradoxically allows you to enjoy both. It is a wonderfully 
Oh, it is a wonderful escape, and whenever I reread it, I feel like I'm there in that apartment building with Chase and Perkus uh, and Una enjoying um, this brainy uh, um, marijuana adult discussions about art and, and, and popular culture and conspiracies and so on. It is rejuvenating in that sense, it is reposing in that sense, but at the same time, by the, by the time you reach the final chapters and the final pages, the book really forces you to confront how immense a privilege it is to retreat away from the world into, into this dimension and to step aside and turn your eyes away from all these problems that confront us on a daily basis and whose toll we are starting to experience in increasingly dramatic manners. As I said, it shouldn't really work, the book shouldn't be this escapist, but also this warring at the same time, and it's part of its magic that it really is, and it's part of that magic I was talking about at the beginning, of Lethem's capacity of making you connect with this paradoxes of contra and, and contradictions that are that pertain to every human psyche and every uh, every thinking person and pertain to the best of fiction, definitely his. I've obviously only just mentioned one or two of the reasons why I love each of these books so much. I haven't even touched on the magical and disconcerting, disorienting supernatural elements in Fortress of Solitude or the hilarious humor in Chronic City, but if these elements that I've mentioned about these books stir your interest and whet your appetite the way that Grill burger, um, backgammon scene um, whets my appetite every time I think about it. Uh, if they do, by all means, read these books. Lethem is a fantastic author. I really look forward to hearing what your favorite Lethem novels are. Let me know in the comment section. Always love to talk about these books in the comments. And thank you so much to you for watching the video, to my patrons for supporting the YouTube channel, and uh, to Jonathan Lethem for writing all the awesome novels. Uh, I feel like he played a part in this video too. I will see you in a next video. Bye everyone.